I need to place a restraining order on somebody. Were you assaulted in any way? Yes. Who is this person to you? He, is, he was my boyfriend. I don't want you guys to go to his house because he said They're if not I call him, he yeah. kill me. On May 31st, 2016, Atlanta was rocked by a disturbing discovery. A naked, lifeless body was found lying on the grass at the Oakland City Park, surrounded by stray dogs. The victim was quickly identified as Bridget Shield, a 19-year-old hairstylist and model who had recently moved from Georgia. Her body showed signs of a violent attack and had been shot multiple times. Was someone trying to say something by using such lethal ammunition? And if they were, who could it be? Do the cops still consider you their prime suspect? Uh, they, I don't, I'm, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that I'm the prime suspect. What could make someone harbor so much hate? Stay tuned as we peel back the layers of this twisted tale, revealing shocking secrets and unexpected turns along the way. Get ready for a wild ride. On the night of May 30th, 2016, Bridget left her house. At around 10.30 p.m., she sent a Snapchat message saying she was too pretty to walk in the grass. A few minutes later, she called a friend, who later stated that she seemed fine with nothing amiss. Around 1.30 a.m., a man called 911 to report hearing multiple gunshots at the park. Then, just before 7 a.m., Bridget's naked body was found in the park, not by people, but by stray dogs. Although there were no reports of the dogs eating her, they circled the body. A man passing through the park shooed the dogs away, and shortly after, Atlanta homicide detectives arrived at the scene. After the discovery of her body, the police immediately began canvassing the area for witnesses and clues. However, no personal effects were found on or around the victim, leaving investigators with little to go on besides her wounds. Now, the autopsy revealed some troubling details. There wasn't any evidence of violations, but it indicated that some of the gunshots came from a straight-down angle, suggesting that Bridget was already likely on the ground, possibly dead, when she was shot multiple times. The police say it appeared as if Bridget was running away from her killer when she was gunned down. The choice of ammunition, radically invasive projectiles, also known as rip bullets, raised eyebrows. These bullets are designed to fragment upon impact, causing extensive damage. Their use in the crime led investigators to consider whether a message was being sent. As the investigation progressed, Bridget was identified as the victim, thanks in part to one of her tattoos, which barely read her name. Detectives received reports from neighbors who claimed to have seen individuals escorting her through the park around 11.30 p.m. on the night of her murder. Surveillance footage from a Shell gas station in Stone Mountain, Georgia also confirmed this. It showed Bridget with two black males, who were the last known people to see her alive. One of the men with her looked to be between 20 and 30 years old with a goatee and wearing a white t-shirt. Police said there was no clear description of the other man. Witnesses described Bridget as looking unhappy during this encounter. On the day after these sightings, on June 1, 2016, Atlanta police confirmed that the car seen at the gas station belonged to Bridget. Interestingly, the vehicle was found behind King's Southern Delight Restaurant on Red Dan Road in DeKalb County, which is about two miles from where she was last seen with the two individuals, and approximately 20 miles from where her body was discovered. Despite the discovery of her car, investigators have not released any information about potential DNA evidence found inside. So who exactly was behind this? And who were those two men? Now, the detectives had to understand Bridget's journey, especially after she moved to Atlanta. She pursued her dream of becoming a model and even landed a role as an Amber Rose lookalike in one of the music videos from Chris Waddle. In short, it seemed like her dreams were coming true. But there was a darker side to her story, too. A simple online search revealed something unexpected. Turns out there were ads on Backpage featuring Bridget in revealing outfits, hinting at involvement in escort services. This shocked her friends who had no idea about this side of Bridget's life. Her grandmother, Beverly Toole, had a theory. She believed that Bridget might not have been acting of her own free will. She suspected that Bridget's boyfriend might have influenced her decisions. So the attention of detectives turned to Bridget's 21-year-old boyfriend, Kevin Kinney. Bridget's friends had a lot to say about Kevin, her boyfriend. 
He was older, had a history of legal troubles, and there were rumors that he might be involved in a gang. There were even reports suggesting that their relationship was volatile. Just a few months before Bridget's murder, she called 911 to report an assault by Kevin. She told police that Kevin hit her in the face, but decided not to press charges. 911, what's the emergency? Um, I just need to um, place a restraining order on somebody. Were you assaulted in any way? Yes. And who is this person to you? He, is, he was my boyfriend. Okay. I don't want you guys to go to his house because he said I'm going to kill me. However, just two days later, police were called to the same home because Bridget was fighting with another woman, Brittany Aloka, who turned out to be the mother of Kevin's child. It seemed like there was a complicated love triangle involving Bridget, Kevin, and Brittany. Before her death, Bridget was living with Kevin and Brittany, which likely contributed to the domestic disputes. A friend of Bridget's revealed that there might have been another major source of tension, the fact that Bridget was pregnant. She was afraid and hesitant to tell Kevin about the pregnancy, indicating it was a recent development, just weeks before her tragic death. But someone like Kevin couldn't be able to live with his current girlfriend and his child's mother without some friction between everyone involved. I spoke to her the day before she was murdered. I had sent her money because she needed a place to stay. She wanted to not stay with Kevin and go stay in a motel. I wanted her to be able to do that. Now, the police took Kevin and Brittany in for interrogation, but they haven't been named as suspects and no charges were filed. Brittany declined to comment, focusing on being a mother. Kevin claimed he was cleared as a suspect after the interrogation, surprising many. The police, however, remained silent about their investigation. Kevin denied being a suspect and claimed he was cleared by the police. He seemed surprised by the allegations against him. He mentioned a unique living situation with Bridget and Brittany living together. There were multiple incidents of domestic disputes involving the three of them. However, Kevin denied these allegations. He denied knowing about Bridget's involvement in the escort business, claiming he tried to keep her away from it. Kevin stated that he wasn't aware of Bridget's apparent pregnancy and denied discussing it with her, unaware of the fact that the autopsy revealed that she was not pregnant. Kevin expressed frustration, saying he wished he could confront everyone involved. He said that when he came to know about Bridget's death, he found the situation quite dramatic and took a while to respond because he didn't know what to say. He denied any harm towards Bridget and expressed his desire to marry her if she were still alive. Even though he had been cleared by the police, they never explicitly told him so. Bridget was running away from her killer when she was gunned down at a park near Atlanta. Our Jason Matera talks to Bridget's boyfriend, who says cops questioned him extensively after the murder. Yeah, she just ended up dead, and um, I, I don't, I don't, don't get how or why. I don't get what she could have done. Like, I really don't. I can't think of any reason. Not even one. But in the immediate aftermath, police had some ideas, and by his own admission, Bridget's boyfriend, Kevin Kinney, the court's number one suspect. Do the cops still consider you their prime suspect? Uh, they... I don't... I'm, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that I'm the prime suspect now because when they called me back the second time to the precinct, and they were like, everybody thinks you did it. I was like, okay, bro. Yeah, um, I'm very confident. Like, bro, uh, I know some good lawyers, some of the top five lawyers in the U.S. right now, man. I, I would love to call them. I would love to place this call, bro. And they walked out and they came back and saw you can leave. The next set of questions that the cops had was his involvement with gangs, to which he strongly denied any affiliation. He admitted to having served time in jail for nonviolent offenses, but insisted he had nothing to do with Bridget's murder. Kevin even said that Bridget had expressed fear for her life before her death, but didn't know who she was afraid of. He also suggested that Bridget may have rejected someone's advances, leading to her murder. But all of these theories had no concrete answers. Unfortunately, with no progress being made, the case went cold for almost two years. On May 31st, 2018, two years after Bridget's tragic murder, new developments emerged shedding light on the case that had baffled investigators. According to Atlanta police, surveillance footage captured Bridget's car in a parking lot. 
In the footage, a woman was seen entering a store and purchasing a Sprite. Now not far from the vehicle, near a fence, authorities discovered a dress. They also recovered a Sprite bottle. The crucial breakthrough came when DNA evidence recovered from Bridget exactly matched the DNA found on the Sprite bottle. This discovery marked a significant step forward in the investigation. But this wasn't the end of the story. As a matter of fact, the investigation into Bridget's murder led authorities to uncover another case involving the disturbing murder of an elderly couple, which happened on October 24, 2016. Sylvia Watson and her fiancé Samuel White were victims of a horrific crime perpetrated by members of the Roland 20 Street Gang. The suspects, including Christopher Crisco Spencer, forced Watson to drive to multiple ATMs to withdraw money before returning to her apartment. Once there, Spencer and another man, Vernon Vito Corleone Beeman, bound the couple and shot them execution-style in the back of the head. Christopher Spencer was arrested on November 2, 2016 and charged in connection with the murders of Sylvia Watson and Samuel White. Following his conviction, Spencer was incarcerated at Macon State Prison. It was during this time that Spencer's DNA submitted to a database matched DNA found on Bridget's body and the Sprite bottle recovered near her vehicle. This crucial DNA match prompted authorities to secure an arrest warrant for Spencer in connection with Bridget's murder on May 30, 2018. Detective O'Connor involved in the investigation explained that prior to Spencer's arrest and the elderly couple's murder, there were very few leads and little information regarding Bridget's case. Surveillance footage from the convenience store showed that the suspects were cautious, having someone else buy the items they needed without leaving the vehicle. This caution made it challenging for investigators to gather evidence initially. However, with Spencer's identification and arrest, a breakthrough finally occurred in Bridget's case. Despite the DNA evidence linking Spencer to Bridget's murder, many questions remain unanswered. It's unclear why Bridget was targeted, and Spencer denies any involvement in her death. Spencer was already facing a life sentence when he was charged for Bridget's case. While Spencer is associated with the Roland Twenties gang, Authorities believe Bridget's murder is unrelated to gang activity. In March 2018, Spencer faced further charges, along with eight other alleged gang members, in connection with the murder of two youths in Jonesboro in 2016. Bridget's grandmother, Beverly Toole, expressed a mix of emotions upon learning about Christopher Spencer's arrest in connection with Bridget's murder. Oh, I miss her every day. I think of her every day. I just wish she was still here. I think she had a lot of growing up to do and I wish she'd been given the chance to grow up. I will miss her forever. While relieved that progress had been made in the case, Beverly remains overwhelmed by unanswered questions. She wonders about the circumstances that led to Bridget's encounter with Spencer and whether it was a chance meeting or something more sinister. Despite the arrest, Beverly remains uncertain about whether it will bring any solace or closure to the family. I want to thank all the detectives and all of the police who have worked on her case and uh, Nefertiti for keeping Bridget's case in the eye of the public and the police also did a great job of that. And I'd just like to say that we miss her more every day. Meanwhile, on June 3, 2018, in Sandy Springs, a suburb of Atlanta, friends and family of Bridget gathered to honor her memory and celebrate the impact she had on their lives during her brief time on Earth. The gathering served as a testament to Bridget's vibrant spirit and the profound connections she forged with those around her. In the midst of their grief, Bridget's family faces the practical challenges of arranging her funeral. To alleviate the financial burden, they've set up a GoFundMe account to help cover the costs associated with the funeral arrangements. This gesture of support from friends, family, and the community underscores the outpouring of love and solidarity that surrounds Bridget's family during their difficult times. As we come to the end of Bridget Shields' story, Bridget's memory will endure, kept alive by the love of her family and friends. The arrest brings a glimmer of hope for closure, but questions remain. How did it happen? Was it a chance encounter or something more sinister? Only time will tell. 
As we wrap up Bridget's story, comment on your thoughts and the possibilities behind her case. Your thoughts and ideas mean a lot to us, helping us choose more interesting stories to share. Get ready for more fascinating stories that grab our interest and encourage important conversations. Don't forget to tell others by liking, sharing, and subscribing to Mysterious Hook. Let's keep exploring mysteries that spark our imagination.